Good morning. Welcome to St. Mark's as we celebrate the fifth Sunday after Pentecost. If you are visiting with us today, I am Becky Miller Pryor, Vice President of Church Council and Welcome. Preaching and presiding today is civic authorized lay leader Barbara Horn. We extend a warm welcome to her as well as to our cantor, Karen Mariana. We thank them for leading us in worship today. To those who are joining us by way of video, this worship service is recorded and is not a live stream. Should you be in need of a pastor during Pastor Basie's absence, please contact Pastor Montgomery, whose contact numbers are noted in the bulletin. Pastor Basie will be returning from vacation on Tuesday, June 28th. The bulletin for this service can be found on our website and Facebook page. All who trust in the presence of our risen Lord in the elements of bread and wine are welcome to receive Holy Communion. Appreciation to Gary Weber for serving as our videographer and to our organist, Sam Robinson. If you have received your July Lion, you may have noticed that the anniversaries and birthdays are missing. This was due in part to a lack of space within the Lion. Copies of this information are available at the exit. We begin with a brief order of confession and forgiveness. I ask those who are able to please stand. Good morning. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our own heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake God forgives you all your sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. Amen.
that though he was rich, yet for the sakes he became poor, so that by his poverty, poverty you might become rich. And in this manner, I am giving my advice. It is appropriate for you, who began last year, not only to do something, but even to desire to do something. I now finish doing it, so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but is it, it is a question of a fair balance between your present abundance and their need, so that their abundance may be for your need, in order that there may be a fair balance. As it is written, the one who had much did not have too much, and the one who had little did not have too little. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
and weapons are made more efficient so that one warrior can destroy the other warrior with greater ease and terrifying impact. Remember, this is written in 1970, 51 years ago. This is what blew my mind. Criminals range into the activities of every part of our great man and statisticians coldly announce an ever-increasing crime rate. Social workers deplore the destruction of family life and youth alienates itself from qualities and standards that represent stability to us older human beings. The only certainty of our time seems to be chaos. A man can justify the nagging burden of the thought that God has indeed deserted him. To go back, Jeremiah could have been justified in this thought. But God certainly didn't seem to be on the side of the Jews in those days. You and I can see that it's by by man that I'm too bad, but you blew it with God and he's through, period. But we've forgotten the yoke of patience. Our scripture said the Lord's love is surely not spent, nor is compassion failed. The Lord is all I have. I will wait for him patiently. It is good to walk in patience. It is good, too, for a man to carry the yoke in his youth. These are not words of hopelessness. Maybe the Babylonians have taken over. Maybe we don't have a future or even a very nice present. But God isn't dead. There's a phrase from our past. God has patience. How do we know? He asked Adam to abide by a few simple rules, but Adam couldn't do it. But God didn't zap Adam out of existence. He put up the signpost every inch of the way of the Israelites, but they liked the side roads better. Still, God didn't let them end up in Death Valley. He got them to the Promised Land in spite of their restlessness, and he made a sacrifice of his beloved son, Jesus Christ, so that God and man could find redemption through his own sinfulness, through faith alone. Yet man continues to race along the highway of existence with little thought for the curves and hills ahead, and certainly little that curves for the traffic in which we travel and curses. But still God's patient with men. Do men have patience with God? Let's look at the word patience. It means calm endurance of pain and provocation in one sense. You would hardly say that we're very calm about what we feel God has permitted to happen in our world. Just look around the drugs, green, disrespect. The minority say that we've run out of patience with you, and that includes your God. He says, why should I let things stay the way they are? They're rotten for me, and it looks like they'll be even worse for my kids. So if you won't change things, I'm going to try. And we shudder at the violence and the impatience. This is 50 years ago. Our young people are saying, why should we be patient with the world you've given us? Sure, you've made a lot of things. Sure, you've solved a lot of materialistic riddles. Sure, you've sent them to the moon, but what kind of heritage is one that produces death based on an overabundance of food and a lack of exercise for one group and death from malnutrition and hot bites for still another group? It surely is not God's heritage you have given us. Our young people are not patient with us or our God when we ask them to die in a rotting jungle or a dry desert. <clears throat> While others can't decide whether to buy a new car every year or every two years. 
Now, Eon are not patient with this, or with our God. But wait, maybe the other word, the word yoke, will help. Let's look at two meanings of that word. One is an emblem or token of subjection or servitude or slavery. The other meaning, something that couples or binds together. Occasionally, yokes were put on criminals to keep them from moving about or from being able to exist in their world as normal human beings. When you mention the word yoke to the average man, you think of those heavy wooden harnesses that are put over the necks of oxen where those people start to perform a job. And now we're beginning to move into that other meaning of the word yoke, something that couples or binds together. The stole, which the ordained Lutheran minister wears, is called the yoke of God. It represents the youth, useful togetherness which man and God can achieve if, and this is a big if, if man wills it so. Our Old Testament writer says two things. He says, it's good to wait in patience, and it is good, too, to carry the yoke in his youth. Now, friends, maybe you and I, and Jeremiah, and God, and those minorities and young people can arrive at some kind of a formula or agreement. God has shown his patience. God has shown his willingness to share a yoke with his favorite creation, us, all of us. Can we do less than share that yoke with God to patiently accept his way? Can we, and oh, this is tough, carry the yoke of patience in our youth? Can young people say to us, older ones, look, we think parts of the world are fine, but we have a few corrections and additions to However, we know you don't understand the, the new math, never did, and we'll be patient with you until you do. And then you and us, God, can pull together. Can we say to you, okay, let's try you and us with God as the driver, if you please. We think we know the way, but we know God does, and we'll let him really Point the way, even if one of us stumbles, we'll wait until the other one catches up or help that person. <clears throat> so, in ending, things aren't really so different today than they were 51 years ago. I found in my age that my dad and I thought a lot alike in our faith journeys. Um, at 13 or 21 or even 30, I wish I had sat down and talked about it with him. We didn't so much talk about it as live it. And I know every one of us here lives our faith. So, substitute the name of God for nature and the yoke of patience for ourselves. And Jeremiah's hope becomes our But remember, God works on his own timetable, not ours. If we can assume the yoke of patience with him and everyone around us, all things are possible. Amen.
and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Alive in the risen Christ with the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. You shower your church with grace, O God, unite the whole church on earth, so that with one heart it testifies to the resurrection of Jesus Christ with power and love. Hear us, O God. You proclaim the blessings of life evermore, like dew upon the mountains, refresh your creation, restore waters, cleanse the air, and provide revitalizing moisture to parch the land. Give your whole creation the promise of new life. Hear us, O God. You direct the nations, O God, and guide all in authority, that they shepherd your peoples in the ways of your love. Defeating us, our impulse to war. Bestow the peace of Christ upon those in authority and breathe upon them the Holy Spirit. Hear us, O God. Amen. Your place within the heart of the church, you place within the heart of the church a spirit of sharing. Give us the power of your generous spirit that we provide for the needs of others. Announce your peace to those who are lonely, hurting, suffering, or afraid. Hear us, O oh God. Hear our prayer. You give us fellowship with one another in this faith community of St. Mark's Lutheran Church. Shine the light of the risen Christ in our life together so that we live in love for one another and our joy may be complete. Hear us, O oh God. Hear our prayer. You share the gift of eternal life. In thanksgiving and remembrance, we recall all the lives and gifts of those who now live in endless joy. Be with those families in the Miami area who are missing family members and dealing with the uncertainty of their life. Unite us with them in resurrection home. Hear us, our Lord. Hear our Lord. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord.
saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come. Thanks be to God. Let us take our cup, excess the wafer on the first level of it, go back to the first layer, take the body of Christ, and when you have done it, if you need help, ask a neighbor or an usher. After you take it, Bread. Do the same with the cup. Go back to the second layer and let us join in the supper with the blood of Christ. with us, be upon you now and forever. 